Uh, Mr. Tan Sri Datuk Dr. Abdul Samad Haji Alis, past president of MIGPA. Mr. Ken Pushpanathan, president of MIGPA. Distinguished guests, successful candidates, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be here tonight and I sincerely mean that. I've been given a warm welcome by those already in the room and it is a real privilege to have an opportunity to just say a few words tonight, particularly to those who represent the future generation of our institutes. It also gives me great pleasure to be in Kuala Lumpur. I've been here a number of times and I'm always impressed with the hospitality and the warm welcome that I get from everyone that I meet. Well, what can you say already that hasn't uh, somewhat been touched on by Ken? Uh, let me first congratulate the candidates. Um, well done. It is a chapter in your career that you will look back on fondly. Um, whilst uh, it was a number of years ago now for me, I can quite warmly say that I remember sitting in those seats and listening to another leader of the profession as I was being admitted as um, a candidate and how proud I felt and particularly with my family around me. So I suppose I would also um, add to what Ken did, which is to um, express my personal uh, appreciation, not to the candidates, I will do that later, but certainly to the family, to the parents, to the brothers, the sisters, all the friends and everyone else, the husbands, the wives, um, who have helped those candidates achieve what they've set out to do. Um, when I was a student, a candidate, I can certainly remember being a bit cranky at times. I can certainly remember having tough days at work, but uh, the love of your family or, and of your friends always made it a little bit easier. So let me certainly pass on my appreciation um, for that level of support to the candidates. I'd also certainly like to reach out to recognise the MICPA. Since 2009, we have been working as collaborators with this program and I am certainly proud of what we have achieved. Importantly, we have now exceeded 600 candidates and the future only looks bright and strong for both of our institutes. So thank you, MICPA, for what we've done so far and I certainly look forward to continuing that association. So I've got a few minutes and uh, I thought I would touch on four themes. Apologies if that sounds a little more than what you were expecting, but uh, it's a great opportunity just to reflect a moment. And so I decided on four themes um, to, to make my comments. The first is uh, for those candidates, you're probably at a point where you feel you know, I've come through this program, it's, uh, it's been to a degree painful but challenging and I certainly felt that in some of the conversations I had earlier in the night. But I reach out to you to say um, business today globally uh, is, is um, very different to when I was in the profession and business of tomorrow is even going to be more complex. Therefore, for you as professional accountants, you have a real obligation to keep yourself right up to date. So you may feel, well, there's one part of the, the, my chapter closing in my professional life, but I really say to you, don't look at it in that way. Look at that you now have a wonderful foundation in which to build more of your learnings. You never stop learning in this profession. It's the reason I sort of get out of bed each morning. It's great fun, but importantly, please keep yourself up to date with developments because uh, you only sense that the way business is changing, the way technology is changing, will mean greater and greater demands put on professional accountants. The second piece I reach out to candidates tonight, and it's a piece of advice perhaps I wish I'd heard a little earlier in my career, is around the importance of networking. Now at times when we hear that phrase, uh, it throws up different connotations, different interpretations. But importantly, it is such an asset to a professional. Now, um, when you start your careers, as candidates have done, a lot of emphasis is put on your energy, your enthusiasm, 
on your technical learnings and after a, a small number of years, particularly around your development of communication, your ability to persuade. But as your career continues to nurture and flourish, you owe it to yourself to continue to build on your networks. Professional accountants come in contact with all sorts of different people, not only those within the accounting profession, but outside as well. And it is amazing how small the business community really is. And when I say that, I don't mean in, in KL, I don't mean in Malaysia, I don't mean in Australia, or even in the Southern Hemisphere. The global business community is quite small. Everyone knows everyone, and if you don't, you know someone to ring that will tell you about that person. Therefore, be part of developing your network and sincerely work through those in your network that you need to continue to keep that contact in place. Working a broad level of network will keep you um, informed, but also actually quite stimulated in your career. Too often at times I see colleagues that perhaps have let their networks drift away and somewhat they seem a little bit, uh, a little more limited in their engagement, in their enthusiasm. So in a way the network keeps you engaged and as well as enthused about your profession but also about your career. So um, please bear with me as I have two more themes I'd like to talk through. The next one will sound, and I did hear this theme when Ken made his opening remarks, but it is around what does it actually mean to be a professional accountant? Okay, so we've done, the, we've done our courses and we've certainly got a good sense about our technical learnings, but I also heard from Mr Ken about the emphasis around ethics. So I've mentioned already that business is complex today in 2012. But public expectations on professional business people are probably the strongest they have ever been. And when I use that phrase, business people, I certainly looking towards professional accountants. But when we do look through, um, let's say the last five years, and it continues at the moment, there has been lots of difficulties, particularly in the capital markets. Now sure, businesses are going to succeed and businesses are going to fail. That's what capital markets are like. That's why people invest in them and always feel that they will um, um, obtain a return for their risk. But what the public won't uh, tolerate is when the tide may start to go out on certain businesses that the professional business person um, does not stick clearly to their ethics and their, um, and their principles. Part of my career was spent as the regulator in the Australian capital markets. And too often, I would come into contact with people who I genuinely thought were very good people, ethically. But somehow, they had moved in their careers from being what I define as very good ethical people into a grey. And trust me, as soon as you get into the grey, you have a problem. It's not that you're waiting to go further into the grey, you're actually already in a problem and you mightn't even know it. So I can tell you now, each and every one of you candidates, those that have succeeded, that you will find points in your career, if you haven't already, where your ethics will be challenged. And you need to be able to deal with that challenge. I certainly had it, and I'm sure other experienced professionals here have as well. So I reach out to you tonight to encourage you to remain true to your ethical principles and your ethical learnings. You don't only owe that to yourself as a professional accountant, you actually owe it to the broader public interest about meeting their expectations. And importantly, as you become a member of our institutes, you owe it to your fellow professional accountants. So let me finish on one final matter. And again, this is a little bit of reflections from my own career. Uh, I was in your seat and I uh, succeeded in my program. And for a while, I drifted away 
um, from the Institute. I probably felt, well, you know, I'd done the exams and, you know, I got my membership and I was very proud of that and my family was proud. And, you know, I was a young fellow with lots of things to do besides my developing my career. Uh, and so I, uh, I, you know, I would use the phrase, I drifted away from my institute. And then, uh, perhaps in my early 30s, I reignited my enthusiasm and my energy to work and to contribute to the institute, but also to get what I was looking for from my institute as well. My only regret is I had that period where I drifted away. Now, um, without generalising too much, but as I went around tonight and I met a lot of the successful candidates, um, the majority of you are in your very early 20s, well, at least that's how it felt to me. And uh, you will have challenges outside of your career that you'll need to deal with in the next few years. Can I only encourage you to remain close to our institutes? Please keep engaged. How you may wish that engagement to be is up to you. I only reach out to say remain engaged because with that engagement, you will enjoy success. So let me leave those four themes. Let me briefly recap on those. It was around the complexity of business and keeping yourself up to date and meeting the expectation as a professional accountant. The second is about developing and nurturing your networks to ensure that they remain strong throughout your career. The third is about thinking about the ethical principles and practices as a professional accountant. Never go near the grey, in my words. And finally, keep yourself engaged. Your institutes are here to work with you. Finally, um, let me again pass my personal thanks. Hopefully you feel that this uh, event tonight not only is the recognition of your achievements but the start of a new chapter and for me and my colleague Andrew Stringer being here gives a real sense of the internationalisation now of professional accounting and of business as well. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr Lee for your inspiring address.